Hello mate and welcome to the first in a series of episodes of Dash Studio Back to Basics. This series we're going to look at the very basics of Dash Studio for the beginners or maybe people who've not used it for a long time. This software is pretty awesome. It's uh, completely free and it allows someone with absolutely no 3D modeling skill whatsoever to produce some pretty awesome looking images. So if you feel intimidated at first, stick with it because this tool will allow you to create things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do in other software, which is a lot more involved. So let's quickly look at the interface. When you load Dash Studio for the first time, you're not gonna be presented with exactly what I've got here. And this is because I've customized my workspace. I've customized my workspace by dragging these tabs around you can do that, you can completely undock them, or you can dock them in any of these interfaces around, or you can create an entirely new interface, which is what I've done here, an entirely new window with my content library, my render settings, my simulation settings, and all those sorts of things. Now, for the beginner, for somebody who's never used Dash Studio before, the importance of doing that is not gonna be apparent, so don't worry about doing that for now. What you need to do is familiarize yourself with the basic tools. Now looking at these tools at the top here, what we have is the ability to create a camera. And a camera is where you can send your viewport when you want to do a render. And these act like ordinary cameras. So if we were to create one, we just apply default settings and it immediately appears in the default position, which is where our camera currently is. And if we were to change our view by clicking on this where it says perspective view at the moment, we can actually switch to that camera. You're not gonna see any change there because we don't currently have that camera in a strange or different position. So what we can do is if we move away from it using W, A, S, and D, we can see there that now there's our camera and it's got objects and sliders around it. And this rectangle here represents the view, what the camera is actually looking at. Now, if we were to select the camera and the camera in the properties tab, which is currently here, the parameters tab, yours may be elsewhere, but it's gonna be somewhere on your screen and it will have these properties in it. You can choose your camera there, and then you can change your focal length, which as you can see, opens and narrows the view angle, and that's because that depends on how big or how far away the camera is actually looking. You can turn on or off depth of field, which is gonna add another little set of brackets in there, and that tells the camera what to actually focus on, how far away the object is that it's focusing on, and you can slide that bracket forwards and backwards and that will allow you to do that and you can obviously select this this cube here and you can drag it around as well if you want to manipulate the camera in 3d space rather than in 2d space so if you've got an object here and you don't want to faff around with sliders you can just click on this ball and drag it to where you want it to point and then that allows you to do that and then you can obviously adjust your focal length by dragging and opening this so you have that method of controlling the camera as well now i'm going to delete that camera just by pressing delete from our scene and it, as you can see it's disappeared from our scene tab and then if i click on this icon here it resets our camera back to the default view the other icons that we have, have up here are the ability to create a new distant light which is how you can emulate sunlight for example you can create a light source that's off at infinity distance in space and you can choose which angle the light is coming from. You have the ability to create a new point light which is just a small object for example you could use it to create a camera or something like that. You can have a linear point light which changes uh, the amount of intensity around it is omnidirectional. You can create a spotlight which is exactly what it says on the tin. Think of it as a camera with similar controls to a camera but instead of receiving light, it transmits light instead of a certain intensity. The next icon along is the one that I anticipate you're probably gonna use more than these three, and that is the create new primitive. And if we click on that, you can see that it allows us to create new primitive shapes in our scene, and we can create a plane, for example, if we wanted to create a floor, and we can create one that's 10 meters, and we can choose how many times that mesh is divided, so how many vertices and edges it's going to have so if we were to say uh, 15 and then we hit accept you can't see anything here because we're in texture shaded mode but if we were to click on this thing that looks like a cricket ball up here 
we can see that we can actually go into wire texture shaded and now you can see all of the edges in this mesh you can't see the vertices but you just have to assume that where any two edges meet there is a vertex and that is actually the case next along we have the ability to create a null which is basically a point in 3d space that has no mass it's something that you can use if you want to get characters to look at a specific place if you just click on it it has a bunch of properties but if you accept you can see that it's quite literally think of it as an invisible object that you can drag around inside your scene as i said which allows you to manipulate what characters are looking at uh, or you can simply have objects parented to it so for example i can drag the plane onto the null in the scene tab and now that plane has become a child of the null node and now if i were to select the null and drag it around manage that without there you go you can see that now if i drag one around the other goes with it and then if i just drag that out that makes them independent again now that's one way of doing it or alternatively you can create a group which is essentially the same thing you can group certain items together and allow them to be manipulated together as a group the next thing we have is a deformer which is something that i'm going to talk about in a later video but for the purposes of this video it allows you to manipulate meshes within a certain bounds dependent on what settings you give it and it allows you to basically change the dimensions or the geometry of a mesh next up is to create node instance and node instances which means just creating copies of an object so if i were to click on this it comes up with an options menu there and we just hit accept and now what we have is an instance of our plane object now the difference between a node instance and the object itself or the node itself is that if i select the original node and i make any changes to the surface properties of this node all of the instances are copied as well so think of this in coding form as your base class and then this is an instance of that class so if i were to go into the surfaces tab and change the color of this object so let's just make it blue you can see that when i change the parent the, the instance the child instance becomes the same color and then clicking on the button beside it nude instances just allows you to create multiple instances at any one time geometry shell is something again that i'm going to discuss in later video and it's a good way of creating effects on a character's skin such as being wet dirty or something like that without actually adjusting the textures on the character themselves so the next thing we have is the tool bar which allows us to choose what our mouse is going to do now as you can see here this button here enables w a s and d navigation around the screen which makes life a lot easier combined with the rotation widget on the right hand top corner of the viewport it enables us to navigate around the scene quite easily next up is the ability to change our camera mode so rather than using this to rotate if we want the camera to remain in position but simply rotate on its axis we can select that click anywhere in the scene and now as you can see now the camera stays where it is and we can drag the mouse around which is allowing us the ability of changing what we're looking at a little bit easier next up is the simple selects tool and that just changes what you've got in the scene selected without providing you with any other functionality then we have the move and select and rotate widget tool which is a combination of the select tool and the two tools following it in fact the three tools following it the first one being the rotate tool so if we were to select this icon here that will center the camera on that object and now if we move any of these widgets you can see that it allows us to apply rotation to our object and if we were to look in the parameters tab you can actually see that these properties are changing as we manipulate this widget and that's a good segue into the fact that you can actually use the parameters tab to change any of these uh, values as well if you need to do anything very very accurately you can simply input the values that you need into these values here next up is the simple move tool you select that and 
You can move your object around. It's really that simple. And I'm not going to go into the tool settings, which is a window that allows you to adjust exactly how a tools work in this video, because I feel like that's a subject that needs its own video. But as you can see, we use our move tool to move our object around in our 3D scene like so. Currently it's set to using global coordinates. So the widget doesn't change direction with the object. It remains Y is up, X is forward and Z is left and right. The next tool we got is our scale tool and that does exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to click and drag and change the scale of the object here. The rest of these tools are fairly advanced in their purposes. So we'll talk about those in more detail in later videos. The last one you need is simply the render button, which is what's gonna create the image for you in the first place. So in the top right hand corner of the viewport, you've already seen that I've used the selectors in these all once before already um, in order to go to wire texture shaded. But you can actually get a preview of what your render is going to look like by going into NVIDIA IRA mode, which we can do now. And as you can see, with the current render settings that we have selected, if I go into that mode, it's going to do a little preview render in here. It's not 100% accurate to what you're going to see when you actually hit the render button, but it's pretty damn close. And that's a great way, a great guide of checking out whether your lighting is working or not. It does take a few seconds, depending on how much stuff you've got going on in the scene, to be able to see that render preview. But uh, it's, it's definitely worth using if you're taking your rendering seriously. It gives you an opportunity to check out, make sure that you've got everything set right in the first place. And then if you're not wanting to see all that information, you wanna quickly manipulate objects in the scene, you can go back to Smooth Shaded, which takes all the textures away, just leaves the base color. And that's the fastest way of moving around your scene. It's got the least amount of detail in it. And then as you can see, you can go to orthographic views using this top menu here. You can go to perspective view, which is the pretty much the one you're gonna spend most of your time in, to be honest. These icons on the right hand side here, if you were to click on that one, that just mimics the widget there. You can select that and it allows you to move around, rotate around whatever the camera is pointed at. Using this allows you to pan the camera. That's another useful thing. Then you've got the ability to zoom in or out using that tool. To be honest, I don't use that one so much. I tend to just pan the camera forward. This simply selects whatever is in the scene and centers your camera on it. And then this button here resets the view to the default. On the right hand side, we've got our scene tab. The scene tab shows every object that is in our scene currently. So this can be like your collections if you're using Blender. And it also allows you to parent objects to each other. I'll separate them. And you'll notice that recently, one of the changes that was made to Daz Studio with the introduction of the filament render or draw engine was that tone mapper option and environment options now become objects within the scene, which to be quite honest, you don't really need because they're in the render settings, but there you go. They're now created objects and you can adjust those parameters within the scene tab as well if you want to in the parameter settings. Something else that you can do is you can add an environment. So you, at the moment, if we go to the environment tab, it's currently set to none, but we could switch it to backdrop. And currently our backdrop is set to a color white but we can adjust that to whatever color we want. And the background of our render will now appear that color. So any space where there's nothing, it will appear this color. Whereas if we have it set to none, in the scene tab or in the, the viewport, it looks like it's black, but when we actually render it out, that will be transparent space. Obviously, if we accidentally save it as a JPEG, it will return to being black again. But if we save it as a PNG, that would be transparency. I would say that's a really good way to finish. Thanks ever so much for everybody for watching. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.